Hello everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. In part one of this series, I introduced you to the toolbar in the develop persona. In part two, I demonstrated how I assess a raw image and made some basic adjustments. In this final section, I'll continue working on the same image, only this time inside the photo persona. My goal here is to enhance the mood of the image and then add some punch and dimension to the scene. First, let's duplicate the background layer and rename it to Cleanup. I'll choose the In Painting tool to remove some distractions in the frame. This tuft of grass here, for instance. I like to keep the brush pretty small because I find it to be more effective. Sometimes you'll need to go over the same spot several times to make it look seamless. I also want to remove some of the really bright parts of the structure and surrounds. Doing this will save me from trying to wrestle with these highlights later. I like to add textures to some of my photos. They don't work with every image, but having said that, it's not always about the texture itself. Sometimes it might be the tones of the texture that create an interesting mood. I have something specific in mind for this image, so I'll go to the command menu and choose Place. I'll go to where I have the file stored and add it as a new layer. Now there's a few things I want to do here. First, let's open the layer options by clicking on the circle with the three dots. I'm going to choose a blend mode so that the texture merges with the original image. For the most part, there are a number of common blending modes that are used with textures. Multiply is part of the darken group and will yield darker values. This looks good on the sky, but is overwhelming the rest of the image. Sometimes I'll mask everything else out and just apply it to wherever it works best. But in this case, I want to try some of the other modes. Screen is in the lighten group and is the opposite of multiply. It will brighten the tonal values. Right now, this is not the effect I'm looking for. I usually settle on either overlay or soft light. Overlay blends the lights and darks from the texture and soft light does the same thing with, let's say, the volume turned down a little. In this case, I'm going to choose overlay. You can see that the texture is creating a vignette effect. The edges are pretty dark, and the center, being so much brighter, feels like it's spotlighting the ruins. So that part actually works. I also love the tones the texture is introducing. The effect is still a little strong, so I'll reduce the opacity to 75%. I also want to tone down the dark areas around the edges of this texture. I can do that by using the layer blend ranges. For this example, I'll choose source. This range affects the current layer, while the dest range, I think that stands for destination, affects the underlying layer. The line at the top represents full opacity from black on the left to white on the right. The bottom of the graph represents zero opacity. So if I drag the line down on the left side, it's like a volume control for the black. If I push it all the way down, the darkest parts of the layer disappear. When I push down the line on the right, I turn off the brightest parts of the layer. In this case, I'll drop the black about halfway down to reduce the dark edges. I think that looks pretty good. So I notice that the stones in the ruins are getting a little oversaturated. So let's fix that. Back in the layer studio, let's add an HSL adjustment. HSL stands for hue, which is the actual color tone, saturation, which is the amount of color, and lightness, which is how bright or dark the image is. You can manage each individual color range using this adjustment, but for now I'm going to reduce the overall saturation by about 25%. Because I don't want to apply this to the entire image, I'm going to invert the mask so that the adjustment is invisible and I can then selectively paint it on. To do this, I'll go to the Channel Studio and find the HSL Shift Adjustment. Let's click on the three dots for more options and choose Invert. This changes my mask from white, which is full opacity, to black, which is invisible. If you're not familiar with masking in Affinity Photo, there's a link to my tutorial above. Now I'll go back to the Layer Studio and choose the Layer Options again. Here I'll be able to see the progress of my mask as I paint in the effect by clicking the solo button on and off. I'll choose the paintbrush tool, and because I only want to desaturate the stones in the ruin, I'm going to keep the brush size pretty small. I'm also using an Apple Pencil for added precision. I'll speed this part up because this process takes some time.
If I toggle the adjustment on and off with the new mask, you can see that it only affects the ruins. I think it looks much better. In order to separate the ruins from the background even more, I'm going to add a brightness contrast adjustment and selectively apply it to the ruins. Instead of recreating the mask I just made for the HSL adjustment, I'll go back to the channel studio, click on the three dots for the HSL shift adjustment mask and choose create spare channel. This lets me reuse the mask in other layers. Let's give the spare channel a new name. We'll call it Stones, and then choose Load to Pixel Selection. With the active selection, I'll go to the Adjustment Studio and choose Brightness Contrast. The selection automatically creates a mask on the new adjustment, so now I can brighten the ruins. If you find that your mask is spilling over slightly into areas that you don't want adjusted, you can add a blur so that the transition at the edges is softened. I'll go to the Filter Studio and choose Add Live Filter. Let's select Blurs and then Gaussian Blur. I'll drop this filter right over the Brightness Contrast Adjustment to clip it. Now the blur will only affect that layer. Let's change the radius to about 50 to make the transition more gradual and less distracting. I still think the image could use an overall contrast boost, so I'll add a Curves Adjustment and raise the midtones and push in on the brights and darks. That adds a little more life and vibrancy to the image. Dodging and burning is the art of shaping highlights and shadows. The technique allows you to add depth to certain parts of your image. In this case, I want to add some highlights to the little bumps and hills and maybe some of the stones and grass. To do this, I'll go up to the layer menu, choose fill layer, and then make sure it's set to 50% gray in the color studio. Now I'll choose Rasterize. Back in the layer options, I'll set the blending mode to overlay and select the dodge tool. I want the brush size to be pretty small relative to the image. And I'll also keep the flow value low. I want to apply these adjustments gradually. Dodging refers to lightening the image and burning means darkening it. To remember the difference, maybe visualize something burning as turning black. I generally keep things in the mid-tones range, but you can change it to shadows or highlights, depending on what you're doing. I'll speed this part up too, because it can be pretty time consuming. I think that looks good, and if I toggle the layer on and off, you can see that the effect is subtle, but makes a difference to the dimension of the image. Lastly, I'll add a high pass filter for some finishing sharpness. I've already sharpened the image in the develop persona, but with the addition of the texture and other adjustments, it'll benefit from a little more. By the way, the order of your layers is really important. Each time you add a layer, it will affect everything underneath. So if you choose something like a sharpening filter, you'll more than likely want to affect the entire image. I've covered the high pass filter in another video, which I'll link to above. So I'll not go into it in great detail here. In the filter studio, make sure add live filters is selected and then go to the sharpen category and choose high pass. Let's set the radius to about two and then go to the layer options, and choose a hard light blend. In the navigator studio, I'll zoom the image to 100% and then turn on and off the high pass layer to see the difference. I think it's pretty obvious and effective. Now I'll zoom out by selecting the move tool and double clicking the image. In the layer studio, let's turn off and on all the adjustments so we can see the difference. Pretty dramatic, I'd say. I used to paint with oil on canvas and I still think like a painter when I work on photographs like this. It's all about guiding the viewer's eye to the subject and creating dimension and vibrancy throughout. Adding layers, adjustments and filters can also evoke a mood that either enhances what's already there or creates an entirely new one from your imagination. The options in Affinity Photo are endless. I hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing in general, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.